While playing around on her phone, Himari gets a message from her old friend, Eisuke. They used to hang out a lot, but it's been a while since they hit each other up, so she's rather surprised when he asks if she's free. Nothing could beat her surprise, though, when the boy straight up asks for a selfie. Getting right into the thick of things, huh? Himari gives him an incredulous response, so he's quick to clarify that he didn't mean it in a creepy way. He's just been in a bit of a drawing rut, so he needs a good picture of someone with crossed legs as reference. Ah. Right. Himari remembers that he used to draw comics, and Eisuke is surprised that she does. In any case, he really needs her help. Help out an old pal now, pretty pretty please. He keeps spamming her, even saying that she's always looked great and that she's the perfect reference for what he's drawing. Eventually, a blushing Himari yields. Though she's embarrassed, she snaps a quick photo and sends it to him. This okay? She asks. Could I maybe have one with the sweater off too? Oh wow, he's real demanding. Still, Himari complies, all while thinking about how she never thought that he'd reach out after so long. The girl's getting self-conscious from what she's doing, but, well, anything for a friend in need. She soon sends her sweaterless mirror selfie to Aisuke, and one minute later he responds, Thanks. Thanks. That's all he's going to say? Himari can't believe it. She did all that, and he didn't even give her a crumb of a compliment? No, cute. No. Wanna go out sometime? She waits and waits for any kind of follow-up from Aisuke, and when she doesn't get it, she angrily throws her phone across her bed. So he's only interested in her body, huh? She's never sending him a selfie again. Well, stand your ground, baby girl kiss. That's not the last you'll see of him. Because come another evening, and Eisuke's asking for another selfie. Yeah, right. Just because she did it once doesn't mean she'll do it again. She asks if this is his deal now, if he'll want a new selfie every time he draws something. Shouldn't he learn to draw on his own without relying so much on references? Initially, Eisuke doesn't know how to answer her, but he admits that thanks to her selfie the other night, he was able to draw something incredible. Hell, it was so good good that it even freaked him out. He also adds that she's so easy to draw, probably because she's so well proportioned. Wow. So if Aisuke says you're easy to draw, it's a compliment. But if I say it's easy to make your bitmoji, I'm a hater. Anyway, our boy keeps complimenting her. Her features and figure are great, and the skeletal structure and musculature of her feet are amazing. Whoa, okay, pack it up, Quentin. The onslaught of praises embarrasses Himari. So she gives in and asks what he wants, which is a selfie of her with her hand and resting on the spot where her chest begins. Again, Himari's very embarrassed. And what does she get in return for her service? Thanks. Oof. While a very flustered Himari's left to wonder if she's an idiot, Eisuke managed to crank out his magnum opus. As it turns out, he's drawing a doujin about a succubus, doing the exact same pose as Himari. She basically tied up a, um, small and slight boy who she calls Little Hero. She asks if he's finally going to tell her where his friends are hiding, but our hero will never talk. He then thinks about how every succubus has a crest, but this classy lady here doesn't seem to have one. Unfortunately for him, she quickly picks up on what he's thinking about. With a cheeky smile, she tugs on the straps of her, um, clothes, asking if she should help him look for her crest. And wouldn't you know, Eisuke's using Himari's photo as reference for that still. Very multifunctional. Another day, another selfie please, queen? Message from Eisuke. Well, if only he actually called her queen. The boy just keeps asking her if she's free and if he can ask for another selfie. Surprisingly, Himari flashes a smug smile at his request. She knows that he only ever bothers to text her when he wants another selfie, and all he ever has to say after is thanks. Oh, I haven't mentioned this, but it's always just thanks with a dot. Still, our girl remains determined. She's gonna do it, and she'll definitely get him to say something different today. This time, Himari changes out of her uniform to wear a sleeveless top, and with that, she raises her arm for a little peace sign. Ha, huh, take that, Eisuke. She bared way more skin today. Just try and blow her off this time. He's probably so flustered he can't even... Could you move your hand a little closer to your head, maybe? Oh foiled again, Himari. At this point, she's really disgruntled. They're old friends who haven't met in person in years. The least he could do is tell her how much she's developed since then. But since she's a dum-dum who may or may not be down bad, she still follows his instructions. Can you point your elbow forward more? Okay. This is a new low even for him. Not even a thank you? Himari's getting more frustrated by the minute. Is he saying that her selfies don't do it for him? Aren't you getting a little excited here? Or is it just me? She wonders. Whoa, girl. This unlocked something in you, huh? After sending that new and improved selfie, Himari receives Eisuke's trademark thanks with a dot. Great. She takes it back. It's not that he's only interested in her physique. He just thinks of her as a reference material and nothing else. 
poor girl's reference zoned. Eight, folks. Time to see how Aisuke's story is unfolding. The little hero's currently being dragged along by the succubus, but as they're passing by a massive aquarium, he gets greeted by a mermaid. And that's where Himari's pose comes in handy. She playfully asks him to stay there and play with them, but the succubus snaps at her to stop bothering them. Some other time then, little hero, Mermaid-chan says. Oh, and by the way, while Aisuke's drawing with his right hand, he's using the left to hold onto his phone for Himari's selfies. So yes, he uses both hands. Another day, another crisis for our grumpy but compliant best girl. This time, Aisuke is asking her to pose like she's about to change clothes. Though she gives a fairly nonchalant reply, saying she could probably do it if she uses her timer, she's having a whole ah monologue in her head. If he's gonna treat her as nothing more than a model for his drawings, then fine. She'll just pose like she doesn't care either. And if he's not getting riled up by her, then she shouldn't think anything of it either. Bottom line is, she just shouldn't get her hopes up. She sends the photo, but that doesn't seem to be enough. Aisuke asks if it's alright for her to lift the top a bit more, and though the message makes Himari frown, she complies. He's not asking because he's into you, she thinks. He just sees you as a bare model for a life drawing. Probably. Aisuke, however, isn't satisfied with her revised selfie, so he keeps asking her to hike it higher and higher, until finally, Himari snaps and texts him that she's not going any further. And his response to that? Thanks, boy. A dejected Himari starts making her way to the bath since it's freed up now, but she suddenly goes back to her room to send Aisuke a message. Can we meet up at school tomorrow? Now, on to Aisuke's story. This time, the little hero comes across a huge centaur girl. Hello, mama, and hello, Himari's pose. She withdraws some papers from under her hoodie, but while she's talking to Succubus about some reports, she notices little Hero staring. With that, Centaur offers to show him how her halves are attached to each other. He's free to look all he wants, but it's pretty boring. Whoa, thank you for your service, Himari. And yeah, Isuke's reference there. That was the photo she took when she decided she wasn't going any further. Poor girl got carried away and sent it still. The next day comes and folks, it's time for us to see Aisuke in the flesh. Let's freaking go! After spending much of her morning being absent-minded and distracted, Himari heads to their meeting place. It's been forever since they met up in person. She still remembers seeing him sat by himself, drawing away. Himari smiled cheerfully at him, complimenting his work and telling him she wanted to see more. The more she thinks about him, the more nervous Himari's feeling. While she's sitting there all fidgety, she hears a voice call out to her, asking if she changed her hair part. Lo and behold, it's Aisuke. He's a sleepless-looking boy with his fringe covering one eye, rumpled collar, sleeves poking out and his tie hanging out. In short, he's a scrappy little dude, but boy, does Himari want to tug him around like a puppy. Tug him around like a puppy, huh? Sounds familiar. Aisuke greets Himari, awkwardly telling her it's been a while, and after inwardly ruminating on that, she gives it to him straight. What the hell was yesterday about? How could he just demand such a daring pose like that from her all willy-nilly? She was half necky. people don't normally send pictures like that to others. To that, a slightly nervous Aisuke matter-of-factly explains that she was lightly dressed in her cami photo the other day, so he figured she didn't mind showing skin. Oh, well, touché. Himari realizes how her photo came off, but Aisuke apologizes. I guess I pushed you too hard, he says. With Aisuke mousily sat down, Himari remembers that this is the kind of person he is. He's a complete pushover who always seems nervous for some reason. In any case, she confronts him about his total lack of reaction when asking her for pictures. With a touch more shyness, she asks if he can't compliment her or something. To this, Aisuke explains that he figured, since he's just using her photos as art references, he shouldn't make a big deal out of it. If he started commenting on how this and that look good, it might come off as pervy. He really doesn't want to harass her. Oh, come on, seriously? Himari asks incredulously, her face even redder now. The poses he makes her do are already plenty sussy as is. Since they're already sussy, he should compliment her at the very least. At that, Aisuke simply apologizes before awkwardly asking if she wants him to compliment her, then does that mean he can keep asking for more selfies? Well, sure. Yeah. Now on to Aisuke's story. Mermaid, Centaur, and Succubus come to the conclusion that little hero really doesn't know where his allies are hiding. Mermaid doesn't mind, though, since she finds him to be a total cutie pie while Centaur finds him, well, a little small for her. Nonetheless, Succubus fully believes that he's hiding something, so she's gonna go ahead and question him again. And lucky for her, she just loves doing that. As for Himari, she realizes that she's gained a bit of weight, so she better go on an emergency diet before the next selfie request. 
Alas, her mother was given cake at work, and who is Himari to refuse? Eat well, rest well, live well. One evening, Himari and her family's having dinner when her mother asks what happened to the boy she was best friends with through middle school. She tries to recall his name, and Himari says it's Eisuke, and that she met up with him the other day. Well, speak of the devil, and he'll ask for a picture of your inner thigh. With that, Himari excuses herself to comply with his rather absurd request. Of course, Eisuke isn't satisfied with her first photo, and though he doesn't say that, Himari clocks it. The boy immediately apologizes, saying that he just really needs a ref of thighs. He tried taking one himself, but the fat distribution is just different for guys and girls. Oh, fine. Himari does as he asks, while thinking about how he's such a pushover at school. How come he's so demanding over text? And so, the photo goes through and Eisuke responds with, Thanks. Hmm, typical. But then, he follows it up by saying that her rectus femoris and vastus medialis are very nice. Her fat distribution is nice. The line her sartorius makes along the thigh as it connects to the knee is very beautiful. Oh, and speaking of knees, the boy goes on, and an extremely embarrassed Himari tells him that she doesn't even know half the words he's saying. Though that isn't exactly what she wanted, it's still a good start. Story time! Succubus brings a leashed little hero to a squid lady wanting her to torture him, but as it turns out, squid lady's a shy gal who doesn't do torture. Whoops! Oh well, she'll just ask someone else then. It's business as usual for the manga artist and his reference. While Himari's doing her poses, she wonders if our boy ever looks at her photos and gets, you know, those kinds of thoughts about her. Probably not. He is just Eisuke, after all. He's got nothing in his brain but art. Even when she sent that photo bearing a bunch of skin, he didn't react at all. So there's just no way. Himari sends the photo, and as per his character development, Eisuke sends her a very detailed feedback on her body. This time, he even covers the wrinkles in her clothing. I don't really understand, but thanks, Himari replies. But he notices that her face is really red today, so he asks if she's okay. Though she's hesitant at first, Himari uses the opportunity to ask if he ever thinks you know what thoughts when he looks at her selfies. Although, she erases that line of questioning, and instead she asks if he gets embarrassed or anything. Well, I ask for your selfies when I need an art reference and I use them for that. I'm serious about art. Why would I get embarrassed over that? Comes the boy's reply. Oh, never mind. Himari grumpily tosses her phone to her side, her mood now ruined. But soon enough, her grumpiness turns into dejection as she wonders how she could get him to be interested in her. Now, now what's up with Little Hero's big adventures? Since the squid torture plan was a flop, Succubus brought Little Hero to the next torturer, Lamia, and this one's actually willing to follow through. Her snake body wraps around the boy, squeezing him tightly. He determinedly asserts that he will never talk, but this isn't good. He can't breathe. Just then, though, Lamia falls asleep while squeezing Little Hero, which reminds Succubus that our snake girl's hibernating for winter. Sorry for waking you, Lamia-chan. Oh, and a quick Himari update. She realizes that Eisuke saying she has a perfect body is quite ooh-la-la -la on its own, even though she knows he doesn't mean it like that. Today, we start our story inside Himari's classroom. She asks her friends what's the best way to get someone interested in you, and this immediately catches her buddy's attention. And so, she tells them about her and Eisuke's peculiar arrangement, which naturally ends with them questioning why she'd even agree to it. Here's a hint, ladies. It starts with down and ends with bad. Luckily, the girls are helpful, with the brunette bitterly saying that boys are always quick to assume you like them, so a dude's gonna fall for any girl who shows interest in him. As for black hair, she suggests that Himari just flirt with him, you know? Make it super obvious that she's into him. Blondie doesn't understand a lick of what anyone's saying, which makes Brunette even more bitter since airheads like her have it all. Himari seems a bit overwhelmed by her friends, but she soon spots Eisuke passing by her classroom from the open door. She rushes to catch up to him, saying that she doesn't see him in that wing often, so he explains that he's just on his way back from the teacher's office. With her friends' different advices swirling in her head like a cocktail of get-good proverbs, Himari gets all up close and personal with him. Oh god. Finally, Aisuke's blushing. Himari got a reaction out of him. She points out his flustered face, and the boy awkwardly answers that it's because she's standing so close to him. God damn, the ball is in Himari's court. With her smugness cranked up to a solid eight, she flashes Eisuke a lovely smile while cocking an eyebrow. I didn't know you were that nervous around me, even though I've sent you so many selfies. This flusters our little dude even more, and at this point, he can't even look at Himari's face. 
Turning his head away, he says that he's just not used to being around other girls, and besides, he doesn't even interact with the girls in his class. Once again, folks, the ball stays in Hamari's court, and she retorts that she bets he doesn't ask them to take photos of themselves disrobing. It's for reference, okay? Reference! While Aisuke is being tormented by Hamari, Little Hero suffers the same fate with Succubus. If you want someone tortured right, do it yourself. This time, she playfully listens to his heart to try and detect if he's lying. Are his friends coming to rescue him? A small, elite force? Oh, it's no use. His heart's already racing just moments after her touch, so she really can't tell. One day during lunch, Himari gets curious about the manga Eisuke's drawing. This has the boy sweating already, so she starts guessing. Hmm, is it a battle manga with lots of guns? Himari pictures herself with a makima fit, while Eisuke, well, he pictures her with the threads getting ripped. No, not quite, he weakly answers. Ooh then maybe it's a horror manga. Himari pictures herself as Sadako crawling out of the TV, while Eisuke pictures her as a mummy. Yeah, well, it's not exactly scary, so... Oh, oh, a fantasy adventure story? That must be it. Her visualization of herself is very, very wholesome and covered, while his involves sussy globs coming after her. That might be your closest guess yet. Ah, Himari gets it now. If it's something he's reluctant to say, then it must be a romantic comedy. No, Himari, you're wrong. Unless you find Little Hero's plights to be equal parts romantic and comedic. And please back away from Eisuke, you're too close. Speaking of close, who would have thought that two childhood friends separated by time would rekindle their old friendship? Though life's taken them in different directions, they clearly haven't strayed far from each other, and they both still have more than enough space for each other in their hearts. At least, that much is clear for Himari, who's growing more and more attached to Eisuke. But given the effect she has on him, maybe she'll soon come to learn that he sees the girl behind his muse. Or perhaps he's always seen her, and that's why she's his muse. Either way, happy posing, Himari, and happy drawing with both hands, Eisuke. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.